Hey guys, it's Elena, and today I wanted to show you how to make a simple floral arrangement in an embroidery hoop in Procreate using my new fiber art brushes for Procreate, which I have just barely released. So let's go ahead and get started. So with Procreate open, we're hitting the plus sign and then the box with the plus on it to make a new canvas. I switched to inches as my measurement and I'm adding six by six inches and the DPI is 300. So I'm just renaming that canvas six by six inches so that I will have that in the future in my canvas list in case I need it. So now I've got a nice square canvas and I'm going to start out with the embroidery hoop from the fiber art brush set. And it's also in the extras um, under hardware, but it's, it's in two places because I just didn't want it to get lost basically. So I chose an orange color and you can choose a brown color as well or basically any color that you want and just tap the screen to make the embroidery hoop up here. And I went up to that arrow and I'm just kind of rearranging it, um, adjusting it to be in the middle of the page and turning that back on. Again, I'm just adjusting a little bit more and trying to get it um, just the way I like it. So that is my hoop layer and I'm adding a new layer above it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename um, that layer is hoop and the layer above it I'm naming um, hoop fabric and I'm going to move that below. So we want the fabric layer below the hoop so that it kind of goes around to the edges. So going to my color palettes, I'm switching to my embroidery palette that comes with the fiber art brush set and going to the fiber art extras folder. I'm scrolling down where it says textiles and choosing embroidery cloth number one in a small size. So I'm carefully using the pen to just kind of go around the edges and take that cloth all the way to the edges but not beyond. And it's hidden well enough underneath of the embroidery hoop so that I don't need to use a mask or anything like that. And that's why I'm just being a little bit careful. So now we have our fabric under the hoop and I am grouping those layers together and renaming that embroidery hoop. So now adding a new layer above the embroidery hoop. We are still in the embroidery color palette that comes with the brush set and I'm choosing a bluish purple color and switching back to the embroidery folder. There's actually three folders that come with this brush set. So I'm switching back to the embroidery folder and I wanted to use the satin stitches to start making some flowers. So I chose satin stitch number one, pressure size, which means that it gets bigger and smaller depending on how much pressure you use. And I'm just making a little petal here. I wasn't really happy with how that looked. Adjusted the size a bit and made another petal. And where it gets fatter, you can see that's where I've added more pressure. So I'm just going to turn the screen around as I go with my hands and add petals all the way around. So I wanted to have five petals on this flower. So I'm just continuing on with pressure at the beginning and then a flick at the end to make a petal shape. So now we have a nice little petal and I wanted to add um, one of the stamps in the same embroidery folder. So I went up to French knot number two in a pink color and I wanted to make that the middle except that was too small. So I made it bigger and just tapped that right in the middle for the middle of the flower. So now switching to a slightly darker pink, I wanted to continue adding more flowers. So I added a new layer with stamps. You always kind of want them their own layer so that you can adjust them. So now because I've put this in a separate layer, I went up to the arrow and I was able to move it around and put it exactly where I want it. So adding a new layer for the next stamp, I'm going to go ahead and choose a lighter pink. Actually, I wanted to go with a yellow and go to the other woven rose, number one, and tapping the screen to add that there. In retrospect, I think I would have wanted to make this one a little bit smaller, but alas, I did not. <laughs> so. I just kind of moved that around as well. Going back to pink and scrolling down, still within the embroidery folder, I'm going back to satin stitch number one. So I wanted to add another 
flower with petals. So with this pink color, I'm adding another flower similar to the blue one with five petals. I didn't rotate the screen that time. And oops, I added both of those in the same layer, but that's okay. So I'm switching to a yellow color now and going to the value tab and changing the B and the S sliders a little bit. B went up and S went down because I just wanted a slightly lighter color for the next flower. So kind of figuring out where I want to put the next flower. Um, I made the same brush. This is the same satin stitch number one brush. I made it quite a bit smaller. So now I'm using that smaller size to make more of a daisy shape. And going back to my colors and my value tab, I just took the saturation down even more. So it's the same color, but a lot less saturation. And right on top of that daisy flower, I'm adding more petals in a lighter color, just going all the way around in between. So now I'm switching brushes again, and I went to the fishbone number two brush and selecting a blue color. Um, I wanted to have some blue on both sides. That was too big, so I'm changing it to a smaller size. And I wanted to have a different kind of flower, more of a side view, so I'm just adding petals kind of in a half flower with some smaller ones on both ends. And adding a new layer. Switching to fishbone number one and a red color, I wanted to make some smaller flowers. Now that we've got most of our big ones around, I'm just kind of adjusting the size. I wanted to make some smaller side flowers with that fishbone number one brush. So I'm just kind of adding three petaled flowers here and there, all of them in this pinkish red color. And some of them were going to be a bit smaller, so I just adjusted the size of the brush down a little bit. And I think that's okay. So I'm adding a new layer and I'm taking that below all the flowers because I wanted to go ahead and group these. So I selected all the flowers, I grouped them, and I'm naming that main flowers. So, because there's going to be some small ones as well at some point, but these are the main ones. So with all of that group selected, I went to the arrow and I'm just adjusting it, just kind of eyeballing it to see where the middle of the hoop is and putting all those flowers somewhat centered in the middle of the hoop. So I went back down to that, that layer I had just created that was below everything else. And in this layer, I will add stems. So scrolling down, I am selecting my stem stitch number two brush and I am going to with this green color and just making sure that I'm on a separate layer below all the flowers, I'm going to add some stems to each of these flowers. So the flowers that are at the top, I'm just kind of bringing the stem down to the flower below it so that they're sort of hidden. And for these smaller flowers, I just made the stem a bit smaller. And before adding the other stems, I'm just adding a couple of little branches coming out from these pink flowers, which I've added stems to all of them. And the idea was that I wanted to add a couple of really small flowers coming out of these at a later point. So now I'm selecting a slightly lighter green in stem stitch number three, just for variety. And that one is in a bit of a bigger size and so I'm going to go ahead and use that for the bigger flowers. So I'm just trying to keep everything kind of in a circular shape so that the stems are kind of all going towards the middle so that it becomes a bouquet. So at this point I realized that the pink flower in the middle did not actually have a middle of the flower so I selected that layer with the pink flower in it and then I went to my colors and chose a yellow color and scrolled up to the embroidered stamps and went ahead and selected French knot number one and just dotted that right into the middle of the pink flower. So now we have a middle of the flower and I can go ahead and add some of these to these pink stems as well. So I went around adding a yellow to each of them and I kind of thought I would add three different colored 
French knots. So I went to French knot number two and selected a blue color for that. And again, I'm just going to take that around and I'm going to add one of these blue uh, French knots on each of the small pink stems here. Just kind of going around randomly. And I'm switching colors again to this slightly grayish purple, adding that on there. And I kind of decided I wasn't a huge fan of that color, so I went into the value tab and made it a bit lighter. And so now it's more of a pink, and I'm happy with that. So I switched to French knot number three, and I'm still in that pink color, and I'm just finishing adding French knots to each of these little stems. So having a look at what I'm doing here, I'm just going to make this layer with the stems on it. I'm renaming that to stems so I know where I'm at. And I'm adding a new layer above that, which I am naming leaves. And selecting a green color. And at this point, I actually realized that I should name that layer um, leaf stamp instead. So I did that. And so going to my embroidered stamps section i chose leafy twig number two and in that layer i'm just going to stamp it onto the page and that's not where i'm keeping it obviously but i'm just using the that arrow that move tool up at the top to kind of move it around and play with where do i want to put this and ultimately decided to flip it horizontal so that it would fit on the other side of that orange flower and I'm just moving it around and trying to fit it into the spaces that I have available. But having a look at that, I wasn't really happy with that either. So I flipped it back again and I wanted to have it kind of going around and up from this orange flower. So that I decided that I was happy with to go ahead and leave that there. And choosing a lighter green for the next one, I started to fiddle around with the names of the layers and I was at first naming them leaf stamp number one and leaf stamp number two and at a certain point in this video I just kind of stopped doing that altogether. but having added a new layer and so I added that again in this other color and again I am adjusting it with the move tool. I'm choosing embroidered petal number two adding that one and I'm still with this light green color kind of like how that one is looking on this piece so I added that and I'm just adjusting it to where I want it to be adding a new layer and actually having a look back I wanted to adjust that leaf a little bit more so I'm going back to my new layer again and then I went to embroidered leaf number four and tap that on the page Again with the move tool, just adjusting it to where I want it to be. New layer and more of a grayish green color this time. I'm still in my leaf number four and tapping that onto the screen. I wanted to make that one a little bit smaller and I'm just adjusting that around the page to see where I want it to be. And now I'm adding a new layer again, choosing a different green and I'm just adjusting the saturation and the brightness and choosing leaf number two. So I'm making that a bit smaller and moving that around the screen as well. And the reason that I'm adding all of these in separate layers is so that I can move them and adjust them each individually, because if you stamp them all in the same layer, then you can't move them. You'll move everything all at once. So I've added a new layer now, and I still have that same brush that I had last time. I wanted to add two different kinds of leaves to this area here. New layer. And now I've chosen embroidered twig number one. And trying to figure out where I want to put that. So I've made it a bit smaller and I'm just adjusting it. So now I've gone to a darker grayish green and I'm adding a new layer and I wanted to have 
that same twig on the other side. So I flipped it and I wanted to have it coming out like the, the twig on the, on the left side. I wanted to have a twig on the right side as well to kind of frame the whole thing. So now I'm selecting all of those leaf stamps, put them in a group and I'm naming that group leaf stamps. And I've added a new layer above the leaf stamps and I'm naming that dynamic leaves. And I'm scrolling down to my fishbone number two brush. I still have my, my darkish green color selected. And I'm just going to use that fishbone brush to add a lot of little leaves as well to complement those leaf stamps. And at this point, I just kind of added the, I started adding the leaves not on any stems, but just as kind of a, to make the whole piece look a little bit rounder anywhere that just didn't look um, cohesive or like it was just like had a gap. I'm just adding a leaf to those gaps. So now I've switched to fishbone number one brush and I'm going back to a lighter green, adding a new layer and I'm naming that dynamic leaves number two. And with that new brush and new color, I'm just continuing and adding more leaves. So I just wanted a little bit of variety between the color and the type of, of stitch that is coming out here on these other leaves. So now that I'm fairly happy with how well rounded that has turned out, I'm selecting all these different things that I've been working on, except for the embroidery hoop and going up to the move tool. And I'm just kind of nudging it around to make sure that it's centered on the embroidery hoop. So now I'm adding a new layer above everything else. and switching to woven rose number one in a pink color. And with this, I just wanted to add a couple more flowers into all these little gaps because I wanted it to be kind of dense with a lot of colors and a lot of flowers all over the place within this, this one circle. So I'm adding a lot of these little woven roses in pink, each one in their own layer. And I've switched to woven rose number two now, and I've still got that pink color going on. So I'm just continuing to add a couple of these roses into all the gaps. So I've gone back and selected one of the roses that I wasn't super happy with and made that one smaller so that it wasn't touching the edges of the other things. So now adding a new layer and I'm switching to yellow, going back to woven rose number one and continuing to stamp little roses in their in separate layers and arranging them around to make this, uh, this composition come out a bit more well-rounded. So I'm adding another layer, adding one last orange rose and then adding a new layer on top of that. And I wanted to switch to another brush. At first I chose the French knot number two, which I actually switched away from later, but I went with the blue color, stamped that on there, and then decided I didn't actually want French knots. I wanted to continue with the woven roses. So I added some blue roses all around too. So we've got the same the same pattern that we had on these small pink flower stems where there were French knots coming through in pink, blue, and orange. I'm trying to kind of echo those colors, the pink, the blue, and the orange in the woven roses throughout the piece as well. So at this point, I noticed that I had not added a center to that daisy. So I tried out the satin stitch stamp in blue and I liked it, but I just kind of adjusted the size a bit 
and went with the blue center of that daisy. So adding a new layer, at this point I'm almost done, but I decided that I wanted to add some running stitches on top of the flowers. So I chose running stitch number three in a green color, and I'm starting to add that to my daisy. And I'm not doing one on each petal, but I'm just kind of going around to the lighter petals only, and then going down the middle of each of these petals with a running stitch just to add a little bit of interest and make it look a little bit more fun and a little bit more messy. So I am selecting a yellow color and going to, with the same brush, do the same thing on top of this blue flower as well. But I decided to have just a little bit of running stitch down toward the bottom. So now I decided on this blue flower, I wanted a bit more stitching. So I'm switching brushes to the multi-stitch number two brush. And still in this yellow color, I'm just going to do, make that brush kind of small and then do a little bit of stitching, really messy looking stitching going up the middle of each petal. Now I'm selecting that middle by tapping on the screen and I'm just moving that up Above. So the stitching is in this top layer up here, that yellow stitching that I just did. So I'm bringing it down to the main flowers folder and then I'm making sure that it's below the middle of that flower so that the middle of the flower is still standing out over top of the stitching. So that concludes our little floral embroidery hoop piece for today. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.